الحمد لله رب العالمين حمد يوافي نعمة وهي كافي ومزيدة والصلاة والسلام على خير النام وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم إن النوانا تعلم التعليم والتذكر والتذكير والنفع والانتفاع والإفادة والاستفادة والدعاء إلى الهدى والضرارة على الخير والحث والتمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسول الله ابتغاء مرضات الله وقربه وتوابه سبحانه وتعالى Praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, praise it's worthy of a beneficent bestower of bounties and favors and we ask our Lord most high and supreme and glorious to send unlimited and eternal and magnificent blessings and salutations upon our beloved Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Qala al-Mu'allif rahimahullah radiyallahu anhu wa ankum nafa'na bihi wa bikum Fasl Wa alayka bil mubadarati bil salati awwal al-waqti وأول الوقت بحيث لا يؤذن المؤذن لكل مكتوبة إلا وقد توضأت وحضرت في المسجد. This new chapter. This new chapter. Where the books? Oh, the books. Alright. You must pray as soon as the time for each prayer comes. You should perform your ablutions and come to the mosque by the time of the. And then for the obligatory press. All right. So now the the Imam, Rasulullah Imam Haddad, is turning to not. So he, he's leading us into the importance of of a connection with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Salah comes from the word sila, and the word sila means to have a connection. And so, isn't isn't that what everyone wants with someone they find superior, someone you find that you respect, someone you look up to? Someone you revere, you'd want to have it, even if they send you an email, oh wow, they like your post on Facebook or whatever it is. Someone that you look, oh wow, that's, you know, you feel good about that. You feel good about yourself that you've been recognized and you feel good about yourself that it's, it's not just about recognized, but it's, it's about the, the person or the, the it's a favor that, that you feel has been given to you because someone that you revere or respect or look up to has taken the time, taken the effort to, to involve you in their lives or take part in your life as the case might be. So what about the person, what about the, 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 the one that's given you everything, the one that's given you life, that's given you your family and given you your health and given you, uh, you know, the, the sustenance that you have on a daily basis and allowed the earth to be as it is in, in order for you to live? What about the, the most glorious subhanahu wa ta'ala that if anyone that we, or anything in that even that sense that we revere nothing should be revered more than him and then that being the case then if there's something that we revere because we, I mean, Allah, we have to call it a thing we call Allah a thing because we can't define Allah in any other way so if there's something that you revere and something that you you want to be connected to then when it's something like Allah Azza wa Jal, when it's something so, so magnificent and so glorious and so great, so beneficent, so merciful, and the one that created and gave us everything that we have, then what should be our what should our, our ittijah, our focus be like to Allah Azza wa Jal? So Allah Azza wa Jal, He knows that the, the human nature, He created us subhanahu wa ta'ala. So He knows that what our hearts need. And our, our hearts, they, they need that connection. They need that understanding of why we're here. They need that understanding of who created us or why did we come to be about. They need that understanding of what our mission is in our, in our lives. And so Allah Azza wa Jal, He created Salat for that purpose. And all the other rulings of the deen came through revelation. But Sayyidina Jabir would tell Sayyidina Rasulullah Salam, do this, don't do this, except Salat. Except Salat. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi as you know, he went to, in the, when the Isra al Mi'raj, to the last place. It's called Sidrat al Muntaha, the last loak tree. It's a type of tree. And he went there, Alayhi Sattu Sam, and Jabir was with him the whole time. And then he said, Go forward, Ya Rasulullah, keep going forward. Alayhi Sattu Sam. And so the, then the Prophet said, I'm, I'm, It's the, the awesomeness of the of the situation. It's like, for example, you win, you know, you're at a football game or whatever, and you win a footy, and they call you out in front of all the people, and there's 20 or 30 or 40 or 50,000 people. Or you've got to perform in front of that many people. It's an awesome, it's an awesome situation, and so one can become overwhelmed by that situation. So the Prophet of Islam was overwhelmed by. He went through, they say, seventy thousand veils to get <coughs> to that stage. Even, but that was after that. Sorry, he went through all the different heavens: the first heaven, second, up to the seventh heaven, and past the seventh, the last heaven, to a point where no one had ever passed. And Jabir told him, 
He said, no one's ever gone past this low tree. No creation has ever gone past this low tree to be close to Allah. And so from that point, the Prophet went forward on his own and he passed through 70,000 veils, 70,000 different levels or stages or whatever you want, like in your Angry Birds. How many stages are there? They don't play that game anymore. It's like the fruit one now, right? All right, whatever, stages and stages and stages and stages till he got to Allah. And then um, Ibn Mas'ud, he says that he saw Allah with his eyes. And that's not, if you hear about this, they say, oh, no, he didn't and blah, 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 and this and that. But on the day, um, we're going to see Allah on the day of judgment. It's in the Quran. Now we're going to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're going to see the reality of Allah. Maybe not the reality, but we're going to see a form of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why, why, why couldn't it be that the Prophet saw him when it's a Sahih Hadith that he said that he was seen? And so that was, that was the, um, that was the mulkif, that was the, the, the scenario that occurred where the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi was taken to Allah to be given salat, to be given salat, to say that any time you want to reach me, any time you want to connect to me, any time you want to talk to me, any time you want to be with me, there it is. It's your salat. Head to your prayers. And there's no, other, there's no better place to do it than where? In the masjid, particularly if you're male. Even if it's, an, if it's an, uh, a non-obligatory prayer. Even if it's a nafil prayer, an extra prayer. The, the masjid is the best place for it. So the imam is he's setting us up for some, some understanding about what that means. And just like any, any, um, you know, any conference or any meeting that you have, there, there's a precursor to it. It's not just, oh, you show up right now and that's it. Oh, oh, I want to meet you in two minutes. No one's going to come in two minutes. It's impossible. Even if you're working in a company and the boss wants to see you, he'll send you an email and say, you know, half an hour, an hour, whatever it might be, tomorrow, next week, whatever the case is. Even if you've done something wrong, he's going to tell you 15, 20 minutes. Don't tell you come right, right, right now. And so that's what the chef's leading up to, saying that the, the circumstance whereby a believer meets spends time has a conference with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is is a precursor to it it's not just that oh, it pops up and it happens and that's what he's talking about he says alayka bi mubadarati salati awwal al waqt so he says that in english what does he say to be prepared you um okay you should perform your ablutions this one and come to the mosque before, no, no, before that, right at the beginning, what he says, you must, you must pray as soon as the time for Okay, so he says, Alayka bil mubadara. Al mubadara is, is um, it's your prioritizing of a situation. You're the one who's coming forward and, and preempting is what it is. So, what the Sheikh is saying, what the Imam is saying, is that you have to preempt your salat. Your salat isn't that, you know, the, your, your apps going off, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Oh, it's time for. No, that's not the salat. That's what he's saying. The Imam saying that you've got to preempt, the, that you have a consciousness of when the time of prayers come, that you're preempting that the salat's going to come. So that's what the mubadara is. Awwal al waqti. So he says that be ready. In other words, preempt your salat at the, at the, the time the salat comes into effect, straight away. So it's not like. We're delaying it, we're forgetting it, we're you know, not conscious of it. بِحَيْثُ لَا يُؤَذِّنَ الْمُؤَذِّنَ لِكُلِّ مَكْتُوبَ إِلَّا وَقَدْتُ وَضَّعْتَ وَحَضَرْتَ فِي الْمَسْجِدِ When you do not, you should at least begin to get ready for the prayer immediately upon hearing the call. Okay, so in, in English, it's, in Arabic, it's a bit different. بِحَيْثُ So that you should, so that it should be the case that before the ma'adhin makes the adhan, that you should have already made your wudu and be ready for istiqbal to, to uh, meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to, to have a reception with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Did you want the English for that? Sorry. What's Do you want the English? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you, you should perform your ablutions and come to the mosque by the time of the call for the obligatory press. Okay, so that's the real way to do it. Or in Australia, sometimes it's a bit hard, particularly in you know, Duhr and Asr and even Maghrib in the, in the winter months. So, okay, the ones that you're at work, different story. But for Fajr, for Maghrib in, in, in summer, and for Isha, summer and winter, most of the, the messages are delaying the Isha now anyway because the time's so short. Then that needs to be the case. Go see the Turks. Subhanallah, I've always come back to the Turks. Go see them. 
Go them wherever you pray. Anywhere that the Turks, they're always there beforehand. You can hardly ever, ever, ever see them running late. Go to the Arabs. The majority come after the Adhan. Pakis are the same. Uh, you know? The Adhans, uh, sorry, most of them come after already the, the, um, the Takbir al Ihram. After the Iqam is made, you look at there's no one there, and then by the time you finish, you do Salat, the whole half the message is full. All right? So everyone's got their Zuruf, everyone's got their situation, everyone's got their circumstances. But the Imam's talking about a, the, the circumstance or the situation of the believer and the way the believer considers or thinks about or prepares themselves to meet Allah. We say the word Salat, but that's not what it is. It's a meeting of Allah. It's a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> Excuse me. And he says, and that you should be present within the masjid. You should be present within the masjid before the mu'addin makes the adhan. Again, it's the presence of mind. It's the presence of heart. It's the presence of the body even. The body's there. And it's in a state to accept the rahmat, to accept the... the the nur from Allah Azza wa Jal, the, the mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَإِن لَمْ تَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ فَلَا أَقَلَّ مِنْ أَنْ تَأْخُذَ فِي الْإِسْتِعْدَادِ لِلصَّلَاةِ مِنْ حَيْثُ تَسْمَعَ الْأَذَانِ When you do not, you should at least begin to get ready for the prayer immediately upon hearing the call. So one of the, when we studied, we studied in Tarim in, in Hadr Mawt in Yemen. And one of the brothers, he married, a, they call her a Tarimi. Is an Egyptian scholar and he took her back to Egypt for a while and he goes my parents couldn't handle it and I was like why what's what, why couldn't they handle the fact that you know, it's this little country town all there is is scholars and dates that's all there is in that place and he said 20 minutes before the Adhan 20 minutes she's already made wudu she's put her, her, her prayer clothes on she's got them saliya put it on the ground the prayer mat and she's waiting 20 every single salat that's how the people, that's how they were raised. That's how their parents raised them. Every single salat, 20 minutes before the adhan, sitting there doing dhikr, making istighfar, preparing herself to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Preparing herself to connect with the majestic and the mighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now I'm not saying that we can do that for every salat, but at least one salat a day. Khalas, one salat a week. One salat a week. Because we're creatures of habits. And all the habits that we have either determine we're on time and don't think you're going to be successful in your life if you're not successful in your prayers and that doesn't no, i'm not talking about the spiritual connection i'm talking about time management don't think that you're going to be successful in life if you can't manage yourself to get to the most important thing you got to do on any given day before the time is due it's not going to happen you're not going to reach the, you might be successful to a limit but you're not going to reach your full potential or your true potential not gonna, you're not going to get to that stage because you can't manage yourself. And whoever can't manage themselves, unfortunately, won't be productive. So he says, if you can't do that, the least of what you should do is that. Isn't, did you read that part? Uh, it, it says that. Al-istadad salati min hina tasma al adhan. So the, the least is that you should be ready to go to prayers as soon as you hear the adhan. And look, even on our apps, you can set your adhan like five minutes fast, ten minutes fast, depending on your own you know, situation and circumstance. But he said, at least, as a minimum, that as soon as you hear the adhan, you're, you're ready to go and, and pray in the masjid. وَقَدْ قَالَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ فَضْلُ أَوَّلَ الْوَقْتِ عَلَىٰ آخِرِهِ كَفَضْلِ الْآخِرَةِ عَلَىٰ الدُّنْيَا The Prophet made blessings and peace be upon him as said, the superiority of the beginning of the time assigned to each prayer over its end is like the superiority of the hereafter over this world. Right? So you think that's pretty good or not pretty good? So the, the ulama, they break it up into waqtul fadila. What's waqtul fadila? You don't have to write this down, just so that you know. The, the, even the time, let's say for example, from Dhuhr to Asr, even that time is divided up. And then the Shafi'iyah, they divide it up into seven different sections. The first one is Waqt al-Fadila. Waqt al-Fadila is the most favored time to prepare to do the prayer. When is it? It's as much time as it is, to, 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 as much time as it takes to make wudu, to walk to the masjid, to do the tahiyyat al-masjid, to do the sunnah before the, the, the actual prayer, and then to do the prayer, and to do the afqar afterwards, and the sunnah, and make a dua. So however long that is, 25 minutes, half an hour. That's the best time to pray. If you're praying within that time, 
then that's the best time. After that, waqt al akhtiyar, khalas, there's a bit more scope to do it. The waqt al kiraha, waqt al durura, waqt al waqt al al haram. I'm not sure if that's what it's called. Anyway, there's those there's those different seven seven uh, different time slots within the, the acceptable time to pray. Within the, and the last one, waqt al the waqt al haram is that there's only enough to do one rakah. Because the Prophet said in the hadith, if you make one rak'ah before, for example, the time of Asr comes in Dhuhr, then your salat is accepted. That's the, the, the least amount. So, for an individual who has all these reminders and watches and phones and you know, whatever, diaries and whatever, all these things, really, 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 I mean, we don't have an excuse. Okay, maybe like Dhuhr and Asr, like you said, we're in, we're in someone else's time, different story. But for Fajr, you're not going to... It's not going to work to stay up to one o'clock in the morning and think you're going to go to Fajr on time. It's not going to happen. It's just, you know, it's not realistic. It's not practical. And neither is it that you're going to go out with your friends and have coffee every night and whatever, whatever, and think you're going to make it and pray Maghrib and Isha in the Masjid. It's not going to happen. You have to schedule your life around your prayers. And if you can't do that, you're not going to really connect with Allah. So he says that that first time, is like the, the difference between the benefit of the dunya or the, or the akhirah. Do you pick? وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام أول الوقت رضوان الله وآخره عفو الله وعفو الله. And at the beginning of the period is the good pleasure of God, and at its end is His forgiveness. So you pray in the first time, Allah is pleased with you. At the end, His forgiveness means He's not going to take you to account for not making that prayer. You get it? So in the last time you pray. But there's only enough time to pray one rak'ah before the time of Dhuhr turns into the time of Asr. You pray the one rak'ah, oh, so Allah will accept. But where's the, where's the reward? You've got to do it anyway. And so that, that's in, as imperative as it is for the brothers, as it is for the sisters. Sisters, if they're at home, they don't have to go to the masjid. They can't, there's no facilities there. It's better, and some of the ulama said, to pray, sisters to pray at home, whatever the case is. But if that's going to be the case, then at the beginning of the time. Make sure you're ready at the time. And for the brothers, the same thing. If you can't go to the masjid, don't wait till the end of the time. If you can't, you know you're not going to gather people to pray with you in your mas- at your workplace or your home or your sporting event or wherever you are. You're gonna, you know you're going to pray that prayer on your own? Then do it at the beginning of the time. And it's not to get it over and done with. It's to be prepared physically, mentally, spiritually, to meet Allah, to have a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah is saying that the most beloved time to him, the time when he's most happiest for you to pray. Even the, the hadith, Al-Habbu Al-Amali Ala Allahi As-Salatu Fi Waqtiha or Ala Waqtiha. The most beloved deed that a person can do or the most beloved deed to Allah is to make your prayer at the prescribed hour and the right time. And the best time of it is the beginning. وَعَلَيْكَ بِالْمُحَافَظَةِ عَلَىٰ السُّنَنْ الرَّاتِبَ الَّتِي أَرْشَدَكَ الشَّرْعُ إِلَىٰ فِعْلِهَا قَبْلَ الْمَكْتُوبَاتِ وَبَعْدُهَا Take care always to perform the regular sunnahs described in the law, which are those before the obligatory prayer and those after. All right. So just before we go on to that, there's, a, there's also another prophetic tradition. What does it say? It says, whoever prays takbirat al-ihram, and takbirat al-ihram is the first takbir, Allahu Akbar, 40 days in jama'ah, for 40 days in jama'ah, with the imam, Allah Azza wa Jal will imbue in that person's heart wisdom. For 40 days. So yeah, every prayer. Every prayer for 40 days. So that's like 200 prayers, no? Right? <coughs> Five times 40. Is that 200? Get yeah. your calculators out. 200? All right. So 200 prayers with the takbirat al ihram. Not just making it, but with the takbirat al ihram. Then Allah will give that person. That's how a lot of the ulama say the whole secret of the whole deen is in Salat al Jama'ah fil Masjid. The whole secret of the whole deen. So in the next part, Sorry, can I just ask a question? Uh, what what's the Arabic that he so yeah, in English? Sorry, um, the the tradition is at the beginning of the period is the good pleasure of God. What's good pleasure it's in a, Arabic? It's Ridwan Allah. Ridwan. Yeah. Can you just explain Ridwan a bit more rather than just Allah's happy. That's the time Allah Azza wa Jal is pleased with His servants. Mm-hmm. So that's the 
that's what we're kind of seeking in life. I mean, it's it's wajwullah, it's the countenance of Allah Azza wa Jal, but that's manifested in the rida of Allah, the pleasure of Allah. So if Allah Azza wa Jal is happy with us, that's it. So he gave salam, he gave salam twice, one to Sayyidina Khadija, and one to Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Allah in that sense. So that means Allah is happy. Khalas, mm-hmm. you've, you've fulfilled your duty, you've done what you can do, what you have to do towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in doing that, have you actually reached that sort of position for that period? Yes. Okay. Yep, that's right. For that time, you've done, as we said, go back to the other hadith, the most beloved deed to Allah Azza wa Jal is the prayer at its prescribed hour, at its right time. So at that time, Allah is not happy with any other deed than that deed. And you're the one doing it at that prescribed hour, Allah Azza wa Jal will elevate. And what time of the adhan can you start praying? After the adhan. Wait till after? Yeah. I mean, you can, but the adhan is sunnah. And then a, a, a shafi'iyah, it's, it's actually fard kifayah if you do the adhan. But it's always good, even if you're on your, even another hadith that says, even if Hanafi is sunnah. So um, even if you're on your own, it's sunnah to make the adhan. The Prophet said, even if you're in your, in your farm or in a field, make, and especially for ourselves, I mean, we should be doing it everywhere we go, especially when we can't make it to the masjid. You make the adhan, you make the iqamah, Khalas, that's it. You pray. Wherever you are, especially at home, especially if you've got kids, in especially time. if your brothers are young and sisters are young, they need to hear it. It's not, we don't live in Egypt or we don't live in Saudi Arabia, we don't live in, you know, where the, the adhan is being heard all the time. So they need to hear that. And the adhan, as we said, makes the shaitan run away. So you, you want at least a few minutes in your, in your household when the shaitan is not there. Okay? So he says, also, that. Be careful about, um, what does he say, muhafadha ala sunan? Perform the regular sunnahs. So, so muhafadha is to, to be protective over. Be protective over your sunnah. How many sunnah in the shafi'iyah? Ten what? Ten rak'ot. When are they? Two before fajr. Two before duhr. Two after duhr. Right? Two after Maghrib and two after Isha. Abu Hanifa has 12, there's two before Asr. Alright, so whichever one you want to do. They're the Maktubat. What does Maktubat mean in the Sunan? Hey? Eh? Yeah, meaning what? Mu'akkada. There's Sunnah Mu'akkada. Meaning what? What does that mean, Ba? Functions are never missed them. Right? He never missed him in Hadar or in Safar. When he was in Medina, he never missed him. And when he was in Safar, when he was in traveling, he never missed him, alayhi salatu wasalam. Alright? So they're the ones. Abu Hanif actually has four sunnah before Duhar and two after. Four before, yeah. yeah. Um, Alright? So it's two before Fajr. Two before Duhar. Two after Duhar. Two after Maghrib, two after Isha. Two rak'ah, two rak'ah, two rak'ah. All right? So those ones, when you when a person prays and they don't concentrate and they're not 100% with it, Allah Azawajal will count those prayers to increase the weight of your farad prayers. And not only that, it, it gets you in again the mood, so to speak. Isn't that what we all, like? We're all moody people these days. So it gets us in the mood for our farad. So when we go to pray farad, we're focusing. We're, we're tr- forgetting about all those things because as when we go to the masjid, what's the intention we're making? Okay, atikaf, which is what? Withdraw. Withdraw from whoever, Society. everything but Allah. Now how can you go to the house of Allah? So you want to go to the house of Allah and see someone else there? It doesn't work. It doesn't work. You go to come to my house and you talk about someone else. I want to say, what's going on here? It doesn't make sense. Come to you come to my house. We're talking about our, us, you and I. Go to the house of Allah. Talk about Allah. Talk between you and Allah. So it's the preparation to, for that for that communion, if you want to use that word, which is what that's what that's what it means in the Catholic context as well. That connection with Allah Azza wa Jal. Okay, and the Sunnah will prepare one for that. Prepare one to leave. And be and withdraw from the rest of the issues and problems and mistakes and whatever else. 
واحضر أن تتساهل بترك شيء منها وما وما فاتك منها بعذر فبادر بقضائها. Beware of missing any of them out of complacency, and if ever you do miss any with an excuse, then perform them as soon as possible. Right. So look what he's saying. Not not just about the faraid, but he's talking about the the sunan. Right. He's saying that if you miss your sunan, then make them up. It happened to the Prophet of Islam one time. At Dhuhr time, a lot of people came into the masjid and they were, he was busy and the people became Muslim. He was giving him da'wah. He prayed his farad, but he couldn't pray the sunnah. He prayed it after Asr. Qadha. He made it up. And that's really what you should be doing. Really, if you want to if you want to achieve that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you want to have that success in your life. And not only that, but you want to, which is the next part of, of, the, of the chapter, if you want to have presence of mind and presence of heart and have your salat mean something, not just, you know, like yoga or whatever it is, Tai Chi, okay? Not just be movements of the body. Then that there has to be a change in one's spirit and one's mind. If really, 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 after every prayer, you're not getting one step closer to Allah, then that is bad news. That, I, I don't want to, you know, like put anyone down or dis- discourage you or whatever. But that's the reality. Every prayer you pray should be taking you at least one notch up closer to Allah. Every single prayer. Every single time you put your head, you're putting your head on the ground. Go to someone and tell him put his head on the ground. The only way you can do it is with a gun. No one's going to do it voluntarily. No one's, no one's going to do it. People are going, what? Me? They know who I am? I'm somebody. I'm from this family. I've done this in my life. I've got this much money. I know so-and-so. Me put my head on the ground. Not going to happen if they break their legs. And here we are voluntarily doing it. Voluntarily putting the most, you know, the worst thing when you were young, getting a zit right here on your forehead. Big pimple, big nasty, because it's the most honorable place of the human being. We're putting our most honorable place where people's feet go, and we're not getting anything out of it. All right. So he says in the next part, which is the essence of the prayer, he says, وَعَلَيْكَ بِالْخُشُوعِ فِي صَلَاتِكَ Have reverence and an attentive heart when you pray. Alright, so he's just talking about reverence now. al khushu' What's khushu' Now the ulama define it. al khushu' they define it as sakan or sakinat al-a'da wal-qalb which means the stillness of the heart and of the body. There has, it has to be, Sakina isn't just stillness, it's contentment mixed with stillness. <coughs> so that means that when you come to prayer, and when you're into prayer, and entering into prayer, and we said that last week, that your state will be determined by your response to the Adhan. That's, that's, that's the determination of your state, or one state. One state is determined by their response to the Adhan. If someone, one hears the Adhan, they're like, Far out, man. I, I, five more minutes and I'll be done. Then they're not connected with Allah. They're not hadir ma Allah. They're not present with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if one, because what's, what's the first word of the adhan? Allahu Akbar. Allah is greatest. Greater than, greatest than what? Right? What I'm doing, what I'm thinking, what I want, what I want to do, my whims, my fancies, my pleasures, my passions, my other obligations. Allahu Akbar. Not Allahu Kabir, that means Allahu Kabir. Allahu is big, no. Allahu Akbar is greater than or the greatest. Greater than everything, the greatest. So that's the determinative factor when the Adhan's call, what my res- internal response is. What my response is, oh, yeah, I'm a, hello, I pray, but I'm going to do this. Wait a minute, that's a problem. That's a problem. It's the same as if you said to your friend, oh, let's let's go and we'll have, we'll have a coffee. Oh, yeah, look, you know, I've just got to, uh, God doesn't really want to go or she doesn't want to go once they come up with excuses or maybe the, or how about I'm going to go there first and I'm going to do this and then and then someone they even really want to go but they're telling you look I've got to go this, don't worry about it it's too much of a hassle leave it for another time so what about if we think about that in respect to our prayers and our connection with Allah Allah is telling you I am the greatest and he's telling Allah well hold on like maybe about no, or maybe and the, and and, the, and how's the connection going to be it's going to be weak connection it's going to be unacceptable connection. So that's the first instance 
And the way that happens is through Khushua. Khushua is in a sense a concentration or a consciousness. I mean, we say a lot of things as consciousness, but specifically it's that one's heart is content with Allah. Content that, look, yes, indeed Allah, you are the greatest. Indeed Allah, this is the most beneficial thing for me and the most beloved thing to you at this time to do. So once that enters into the heart and once that permeates through the mind, then the individual, then the person can come and, and truly focus on their prayers because they're not preoccupied. There's nothing else going on saying, oh, what about this, maybe this, this, that, that and the other. It's not going on. Khashia. They've, they've made that commitment internally and mentally. I mean internally, spiritually and mentally to say, that's it. This is what I am going to do. And we'll talk about a little bit more what it is. And Hudur al-Qalb. Which is what? What's, what's Hudur al-Qalb? An attentive heart. Right? That's the next thing. If, you, so if you're talking to me and having a conversation with me, and then you know, you're trying to say something, and I've got my phone, and I'm playing with it. And what happens to that conversation? It blows out. Right. right. Okay. It's not going to continue. It'll be like, dude, if you're busy, I'll come back later, or we'll talk another time, or something more important. I'll go help you fix it, or whatever. Okay. So that's the other aspect of it that the, one's heart has to be present. And, and that means that one, is, one thing is in the mind. That's the first aspect, for sure. But the next part is one's heart. In other words, you have to be wholeheartedly, one has to be wholeheartedly into what they're doing. Into it. If one isn't, then the level of prayer will be decreased. What tahsin al qiyam Sorry. Uh, perfect your standing. Again, how many times have you gone... And the brother's doing this. Does that mean they're concentrating? Does it mean they're devoted? It means their heart present? It doesn't. So that they're the outward signs. That one time my brother he came to me and we were praying next to him, so Paul just that prayer. And he was, he was almost jumping the blood. And later on, he goes, I want to go and get married. What do you think? I don't think you should get married. Now, if you can't focus in your prayer, you want to go get married. You can't commit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created you. You can't give Allah azawajal five or seven minutes without... What, how are you going to give it to another human being who's fallible? Another human being is going to get on your nerves. Another human being is going to sometimes be, have a bad day or a bad week or a bad month or a bad year or bad ten years or just be bad for the whole life. How? It's not going to happen. Oh, I'm ready, I'm ready. No, bro, I don't, I don't think you're ready. If your prayers, uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Allah, the birds used to come and land on his head because he was so still in his prayer. That's how still he was, though, like a post. They used to come and land on his head. This guy's you know, he's like break dancing or something, whatever. That's what he used to be called when I was young, whatever you've got now. What is it called now? Bebopping or what is it? I don't, I don't know. Right? No, those guys, they got the competitions. Uh, anyway, leave that for another time. But right, so if the person's standing, because the ulama talk about what's the what's the most what's the most um, sacred or the most the best part of prayer? What do you think it is? Sujood. Sujood. What, why do you say that? All right, because the hadith says that the closest a person is to Allah is in their sujood. But the Shafi'is don't say that. Again, the Shafi'is they say that it's qiyam. It's the standing. Why do you think they say it's the standing? Okay, what are you going to say? Okay, so it's because you're reciting the words of Allah. You're reciting the Quran. And then what's better than the recitation of the Quran? Basically nothing. The words of Allah. So that's what the Shafi'is say. So add that on to there. Tahseen, in other words, to perfect one's <coughs> excuse me, standing. <coughs> Reciting the words of Allah to who? Allah. Allah, the ultimate form of communication. And we'll stop at this last one. Wa tartiru qiraati wa tatabburuha. 
intone the Quran and meditate on it. Okay, now this is a little bit hard for us because we're kind of Aussies, not really. If you, if you ask a white person, they'll say we're wog. And if you ask a Lebanese import, they'll say we're Aussies. So we're in the middle somewhere. Okay, so we're somewhere in the middle, which is good in some ways and bad in others. One of those being that sometimes it's hard for us to understand what we recite in the Quran. And, and that's, that really is the fund, one of the fundamental aspects of the prayer. To be able to recite and understand what you're reciting when you're doing it in the prayer. Because that's the whole point. You're in a gathering with Allah as a You're in a meeting. You're in a conference with Allah. And by reciting the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. And, and that's, that's really where the, the, the devotion and the concentration comes into it. The consciousness, the still heart, the still mind. If I can understand what I'm saying and I can think and ponder over what I'm saying, then everything else stops. Everything else ceases. And I, and I transcend my physical state. And I start entering the spiritual realm. And I start connecting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that is, is it, it's mysterious, but it's, it's been done. Abdullah bin Zubayr, Abdullah bin, I can't remember what was the other one. One of the two of the Abdullahs bin Zayd. Anyway, one of the, the their fathers passed away. One of their fathers passed away. Both of them passed away. And then they came to do take an account of each other. Anyway, long story short, as they say, one, one of them said, look, you know, there's a place to clear the debts. There's a place, a plot of land out past Medina. It's yours to take it. And he went there and he said, it's got no water on it. But. So he went there and he prayed to the God and he said to his, his partner, his servant, his man, his helper, to dig there. And he dug and that's where the water came out from after he prayed to the God to the Salat. So the, the Sahaba and the Prophet of Allah Sam taught him that. He says, amran, ila salat. And they said about him that any time he was perturbed by any affair, straight to prayers. Straight. And what did he say? Salat, the coolness of my eyes. In other words, where I'm chilled, where I chill out, where I relax. It's not, you know, Facebooking or, or going out and doing whatever or working out or whatever it might be. It's the prayer, the first instance. Not to say that we don't do those things. Alhamdulillah, we do it. The thing is, the initial connection, the first instance, is to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. But it's the same thing. If you were to come, it's like a gift we offer Allah, the prayer. So if you were to come to someone's house and they're, they're organic, they only eat organic, or let's say a Muslim, and you bring in pork, How'd that go down in the household? It wouldn't go down very well. Or a bottle of whiskey or something, or alcohol, whatever it is. It wouldn't go down very well. The gift wouldn't be accepted. All right? And then your intentions, what you're trying to do, would be questioned. So if we, then we can't compare them to Allah. But when a person is presenting to Allah, what's he presenting or she presenting? Allah's words. It's the best. And you can't present anything better than that. There's nothing that can be presented to Allah better than what is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a sifa, it's a quality of Allah. It's the, His word subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the, that's the fundamental connection. And when we, when we enter into that state, then we transcend the ephemeral. We transcend the, you know, the, the world that we live in, the, the, um, the, terrestrial, the terrestrial world, and we enter the celestial world, the, the skies, the, you know, the, things that, the secrets that are there. But it takes practice. Can't, they think, how many times do a sheikh, I can't concentrate in my prayers. Yeah, well, man, what do you expect? You're out looking at haram. In, thinking about haram. Hanging, planning about haram. Talking, talking about haram. The whole life is, what does Allah say? It doesn't say pray. It doesn't say pray. Establish it. Establish the prayer. Establish the connection with me, subhanahu wa ta'ala. What, just five times a day? That's it. That's the only time we connect for. What about when you're walking, talking, sleeping, all the things we've been doing? All the things we've been talking about, the sunnah of the Prophet of Allah. That's the connection. So when those are all in one's life, of course it's going to be easy to pray. Of course it's going to be easy to pray. One of the one of the Habib, he never used to read the Quran in Ramadan during the day. Because you could taste the sweetness of it. He's like, I could taste like honey, so I'm fasting, so I used to read at night. 
We used to do other things during the day. That's the reality. That's the reality. And we think, oh yeah, it's a story about these old dudes, but why not today? Why why can't Allah give us that help? Why can't Allah give us that nusra? When he told the Prophet of Allah that there'll come a people, they won't have ever seen you. He told the Sahaba, the, Sahaba, the Prophet ﷺ told the Sahaba, they're going to come a people, they don't, they've never seen me or heard me, but they would give everything just to see me in a dream. They hold all their possessions, their family members, just to see me in a dream. They said, isn't that us? They're my beloved. The Sahaba said, no, oh, we're your beloved. He said, no, you're my companions. They're going to come later. And they're worth 50. 50. He said, Ya Rasulullah, 50 of us or 50 of them? 50 of you, he said. So 50 Abu Bakrs, 50 Umars, 50 Uthman, 50 Ali, 50 Hassan, 50 Hussein, 50 Khadija, 50 Aisha, 50, 50 uh, Fatima. What's the only thing that's stopping us is us. That's the only thing. And if that part of it, our lives isn't fixed up, what's the rest going to be like? Alright, so next week, inshallah, Azawajal, we'll continue um, with the with the sifat al-salat, the, the quality, how how the salat should be in terms of one's internal connection with Allah Azza wa Jal and one's presence of mind when one's praying so that one's life inshallah Azza wa Jal can change. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alayhi wa sallam. Are there any questions about any of that? About anything else? Nothing? Can, can you just explain uh, the wisdoms behind the the spring appearing after the two daqat? Connected with Allah, Allah showed him what he wanted. Okay. The, the, the believer, right, the believer, when they have a need, when they have a, a necessity that needs to be fulfilled, where do they turn to? Allah. What's the best way to turn to Allah? Salat. And so these people, that all their needs were being fulfilled through their salat. It wasn't through having good connections and networking and, you know, putting a nice page on LinkedIn. It, that, that wasn't what they, they, they did all that. Not so that we don't do it. Yes, we do it. That's the sunnah. The sunnah is to take with the asbab. The thing is, their hearts were connected to what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whenever they had a need, whenever they had a need, they asked Allah. And they just, that's the way they even, one time the one of the salihin was telling us a story when we were in India. They go, see that sheikh? We go, yeah, he's, he's a big, big time sheikh. And we go, what do you mean? He goes, his mum, dad died when he was young and his dad was a big sheikh as well. And his mum raised him. Every day she'd say to him when he come back from school, you know, he wants to eat. She says, pray to the Qa'at, Salat al Haja. I got a need from Allah, and Allah will fulfill it for you. And so she used to make the you know the food and whatever curry or whatever is in India. So put it on the side, and then he used to come and eat it. Then one day she got caught up and she didn't come. She didn't come on time. And then she came and she saw the kid and he was when he was just a kid and she said, you know, um, did you eat? He said, Yeah, she said to him, How'd you eat? He goes, I prayed to the Qa'at. And the food was there, then I ate. All right, so this is how they train their children. This is how the Salihin train their children. So these, the, and this is this is the training of the Prophet of Allah Sallam. Everyone that had an issue, everyone that had a concern, but even him, Ali Sallam, Faza'a ila salat. Any concern that he had, he Faza'a, he jumped towards the prayer. The connection with the prayer was that for us, it's like man, it's good and we're done with. Let's just get it over and done with, man, because I've got other things to do. Theirs was the opposite. Let's stop everything. Everything ceases. Everything finishes. Some of the Salihin, when they heard the Adhan, straight away their face would go white. Some of them, they couldn't. They were, the Sahaba, they were about to, like they were farming, they were about to, to hit the um, axe or whatever they were using. As soon as they had a low open, they would drop it behind their backs. They won't even continue the hit they were having. Some of the scholars, they were reading and they were writing, straight away they hit the Adhan, bang over so it's that connection that we're talking about with the connection we're not talking about the connection with Allah that's something that's going to come later but the connection with the thing that's going to connect you like your phone all right how, how much do we love our phones like, I know we don't but just for example bear with me how much we make people they have their phones they sleep with their phones they wake with their phones their phones under the pillows their phones are always on their phones are making funny noises. Their phones are colored in a particular way. And then what? If someone else pulls out a phone, everyone's looking. What kind of phone does that person have? And what? It's a phone. But why is it important? Not because it's a piece of whatever it's made out of. And this, because it connects us to things. It connects us to people. It connects us to information. 
That's why it's so important. Like anyone, everyone has phones. Everyone's so in love with their phones, it's not even funny. That's how Salat was for the Sahaba. If you want to give a, an example, that's how the Salat was for the Sahaba. And what happens when they use when you lose your phone? Yeah. It's the end of the world. My phone. Now I can track it and whatever else and all these things. But it's a big problem. My life's over, isn't it? My life is finished. I can't live. Or there's no reception. Oh no. No reception. What am I gonna do? How am I gonna live? How am I gonna spend my time? I've lost I've lost my way. That's how it was for the Sahaba with Salat. Exactly exactly how it was, if you want to compare it with anything. It's exactly how it was. They were, we're always conscious of where our phones are and how much charge they have. They were the same with the Salat. Always conscious of their level, you know? That, that, and believe it or not, they used to even repeat this. I know, like, it's heavy duty, I know. But they used to repeat it. If they weren't happy with it, they would repeat it. And the Sheikh they have that. They have a mi'ada. What i'ada? Mi'ada is if you have a mis- have a i'ada is if you make a mistake. Yeah, either salat. And mi'ada, someone else is praying, they'll go and join. It's a prayer. It's something special for them. It's a connection to Allah Azza wa Jal. And that's the purpose of their life, to connect to Allah and get the rida of Allah, the pleasure of Allah. So that's the kind of what, what we're talking what we, about. What you touched upon, that's the ideal world, right? That's what and that's what we, we seek. Um, but in, in our society, like we said, because our schedule and our situation, our um, circumstances. How, how do we how do we strive to, for that perfection? It is in the first instance as we're saying to have that love for that prayer, have that love for Allah Azza wa Jal, and realize the importance and how paramount and the monumentous or monumental it is that Allah gave us this gift that He took the Prophet to Him to give Him that gift to us, and that really anything that we need, anything that we desire, anything that we want is is attained through that prayer. That's the first instance. So when we belittle it, when we push it to the side, when we don't make it our priority, that's when the the, the, the reverence and the respect for Allah and for the prayer diminishes. So we think because we, we you know we live in the, in the in the terrestrial world, terrestrial world that you know it's all through this and connections above. We've got to get rid of that thought. Not to say we don't have them. Yes, we do. But that's not the cause. The cause is what Allah decides to be. And look. And that's what we'll talk about next week is practice makes perfect with anything. No one expects that they're going to go into the gym and lift 100 kilos first go. It's not going to happen. No one expects they're going to run, you know, 11, whatever, 10.5 seconds with 100 first go. No one expects they're going to be able to, you know, do anything in life, read a book from cover to cover straight away. Things take time to build up to it. And so really in the times when we're, when we're free, we have to schedule some time to pray. Like when was the last time, and maybe Ramadan you, you may have done that, but outside of Ramadan, where you did a record for three, two minutes, one minute, or a sajda for half a, half a minute even, where it wasn't just subhanAllah, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, 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 where it wasn't just that. So if I'm not doing that outside, there's no way in that time when I've got a million things going on, I've got to be here, this, that, that, but I'm going to be able to, and if Allah, 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 Allah might decide that that's going to be the case. But the likelihood of it occurring is very minimal. So I have to be conscious that practice makes perfect in my prayers as well. And then the Qur'an, I'll, I'll talk about some of these things next week as well. The recitation of the Qur'an, the Dabbul Qur'an, that's, that's, you know, that's foundational because it's Allah's words and we're trying to connect with Allah. So Allah will you know, he'll incline something in our minds and our hearts to help us deal with whatever we're dealing with in our in our lives but the essence of it is the tawajjuh the the focus or the tawajjuh isn't just focus it's the it's the implication that salat has for us in our lives what does salat really mean for me as, as a muslim what is the status of salat in my life what is the the importance of salat what's the weighting of salat okay any other questions uh you, you mentioned three three prayers i haven't heard of before i wanted to know if there's a specific uh, practice or intention for either of them. So Salat al Hajjah. Right. Any any need you have, just a sunnah, it's enough of the prayer. Is there anything you're supposed to say during There's it, heaps of du'as and things for it. You can look them up. Okay, inshallah. And right. Salat Mi'ada and Mi'ada. Oh, that, that's just in the Shafi'is. They have Mi'ada is if, if you, um, you know, like say for example, you prayed and then someone comes who wants to pray. Right? You already prayed, let's say, Maghrib. 
You already prayed the Maghrib. Someone wants to come and pray in Maghrib. And you want to pray in Jama'ah with him. But you've already done your Farida. Your Farida is gone. Mm. So Mi'ada is that. That you're praying again, even though your Farida is gone. So do you make intention for Sunnah or Fard? No, you make intention for the, for the, for the Jama'ah, but for Fard. It's, it's what's called Mi'ada. You're doing it again. Okay. And I'ada is if you, if you remember you didn't have Wudu or you know your, your Awra was exposed or something like that. Or you weren't facing the Qibla. Or you, you prayed before time rather than after time. That, that is I'ada. You have to do that. That's Fard. If you make a mistake, you have to do that prayer again. Or you, you're, one of the conditions or the preconditions of Salat isn't present when you actually pray, then you've got to do your, your prayer again. Okay. Or any other questions? No. Is there The best time to make it up is... Um, is straight away in the next salat. So, like, for, for example, you couldn't do the duhr sunan because you're at work and you only could pray fard or whatever. Then next time for asr, if you, if you still can't do it for asr because you're still at work, then maghrib. So, for example, maghrib, you pray the sunnah for maghrib and then make it up from there. If you haven't done the sunnahs for a long time, look, don't worry too much about it, but try and get into the habit of praying your sunnahs. And so then the other thing is, when you get into the habit, you get into the habit, for example, tahayt al-wudu. Sayyidina Bilal al the Prophet heard his footsteps in Jannah. And he said, what did you do? He called him. The Prophet called Sayyidina Bilal. He said, what are you doing? How come I hear your footsteps there? And he says, well, he says what do I do, Ya Rasulullah? Every time I make wudu, I pray to record. So that's that's called tahayt al-wudu. And then tahayt al-masjid. Every time you enter into the masjid, you pray to record. And you can do, you can get used to doing that at, at home. But it's not to record, bang, 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 bang. There's got to be some, some as we said, as, as the Imam said, some khushu, some hudur al-qalb, some tahsin in terms of the qiyam. So the, those things have to be there if you want it to improve. If you keep staying the same, if you keep praying the same, your prayer will stay the same. It won't improve. And your connection with Allah will, will remain as it is. So you know, they're, the, they're, the types of, uh, they're the types of things in your sunnah prayers that you should be doing. And as much as you can do, you do. You know what I mean? As much as you can do, try not to leave those 10 rakat before uh, Fajr, before and after Dhuhr, after Maghrib and Isha, try not, not to leave those and extra ones that'll help you stay strong it'll help you make you love to pray and that's that's kind of really what it is if you want to be connected to Allah you have to, if you want to love Allah you have to love the things Sha'a'irillah the things that are connected to Allah and that's well, first and foremost doing the prayer any other questions? Alhamdulillah <laughs> Ya Allah, we ask you to give us the understanding of, of how to pray correctly with our hearts and with our minds. Ya Allah, we ask you to make so those people that constantly pray in jama'ah and in the masjid, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you to make so those people that know and realize that the only way they can have their needs met is through the prayer, Ya Rahman Ya Allah, we ask you to make so those people that understand the knowledge they've been given and have the capacity to implement and apply it in their lives. Ya Allah, we ask you to lift the difficulties and the trials and the tribulations of the Ummah of the Prophet of Allah, Yisra Salaam. Ya Allah, we ask you to bring the Ummah of the Prophet of Allah back to, back to the deen of Allah Azawajal, in the most beautiful and beneficial way. Ya Allah, we ask you to elevate the status of our Mashiach from this life and the next. We ask you to, to give them the strength to overcome the evil that's out there. We ask you, Allah, to, to guide them, to guide us to what you love, Ya Rahman Rahim. Ya Allah, we ask you to place barak in the lives of, of those who are responsible for this place in which we have this class, Ya Allah. And we ask you, Ya Allah, to bless them and bless their lives and their families, Ya Rahman Rahim. بخير ولطفه وعافيه ولا حضرته مديه السفر الفاتحه